Hello and welcome to the fourth tutorial in the Cocos 2DX version 3 C++ tutorial series and in this tutorial we're going to look at how to add multi-resolution support. Basically what multi-resolution support is, we have different devices, we've got an iPhone, we've got iPhone Retina and then we've got iPhone 5 which is an, a Retina iPhone but slightly wider, then we've got iPad and iPad Retina and if you go in further we've got various Android devices and we're not going to create an application for each individual de um, device, we're going to create the one application, and that's what you, or well, that's ideally what you want to do, and you'll program that application so it runs on, if not every device, on most of the devices, and you'll just create a few set of assets, and the application will be designed and programmed so it loads the correct assets. Before we get into the coding, this tutorial assumed you've done tutorial two. If you haven't, don't worry. There'll be a link in the description to the source code, or you can just start in your own project. That's fine as well. Also, there will be a link in the description to a source code produced from this tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up the project from tutorial 2, which is, if you can't remember, it was just setting up for Android on a Mac, but it's also set up for iOS as well. And what we're going to do is just run it in the simulator so you can see what it looks like before we add multi-resolution support and one of the main problems with the current default implementation. Okay, it's just obviously taking a little while to compile, but that's a okay. And it has almost finished compiling. Okay, now it's gonna run it in the simulator. So there we go, it's loaded the background, it's got some text, this is from the hello world scene file, and it's loaded up the close button. Let's go back here. And you might think, yeah, it looks great, and it does, because it's using the assets from, or for I should say, a iPhone, or I mean the first gen iPhone, and an iPhone 3G and a 3G, so a non retin iPhone, yeah, it looks great. And if we just go into the resources folder here, as you can see, there's a hello world, which is the background, the close, normal, close, selected. But that's it. These assets are just suited to iPhone. And I'll show you what happens if I select iPhone Retina. So this is iPhone 4 and 4S. This is slightly wider. Well, slightly bigger, I should say, four times the resolution. So this is 960 by 640. Uh, now you can see what the problem is. It's loaded the same asset and it's significantly small, exactly a quarter of the screen size. And even though this button seems reasonably usable, when it's on a smaller device like your phone, it's not going to be very usable at all. And let's just show you what it looks like on iPhone 4. I mean, iPhone Retina 4 inch, which is basically iPhone 5 and 5S. They look the same as iPhone 4 and 4S, it's just slightly wider. And we'll have a similar issue with iPad because this is 1024 by 768. And then we'll finally show you iPad Retina, which is 2048 by 1536. This is ridiculously big. So it's it you, you actually have to scroll to <laughs> see stuff. But you, you can see this is just ridiculous how small it is compared to everything else. And this is not what you want to do. This is just ridiculous. So what we're gonna do is just gonna run this one more time again. Uh, I'm just gonna run it in an iPhone simulator. The reason I'm gonna run it is I'm just gonna delete the application. Which is this one right here. Reason I'm deleted because when we add some new assets and add the new code, um, 
I've had conflict issues where it's sort of loading the old code in the load us I mean the old assets uh, that's just you know let's just close this down and let's open it up again okay that's a okay was gonna close that down delete this application delete so that is fine now just quit from here what we're going to do is delete the old files aka hello world close or well, we, we can leave fonts there close normal and close selective just get rid of them we no longer need them and then the next step is to copy our new files i've already created the files in here and what they are i'll just explain to you once i've copied them over resources copy and paste so we've got an ipad folder an ipad hd ipad retina an iphone an iphone retina and an iphone 5 which is iphone retina but slightly wider and my thing you might have noticed that all of these contain a hello world but they don't all contain a closed normal one color select and the reason is an iphone hd an iphone hd5 and an ipad are roughly similar resolution so stuff that isn't the background so so sprites or items that are on the background you can just reuse them just put in the iphone hd and the way we're going to program it it'll fall back to those assets which is fantastic ipad hd has its own close normal and close selected and so does iphone so let's actually just get to the code in show you how we're going to do this just need to get rid of these first just click delete and what you need to do is drag and drop the folder that you added to your project and just get rid of that and let's do create folder references for any folders for any added folders if you don't want to do create groups for any added folders if you do create folder references it'll update the, the um, images and assets as you add more into it and just click finish and the next step is make sure you're in app delegate.cpp after director set animation interval you want to do auto file utils equals file oops lazy file utils get instance auto screen size equals gl view get frame size um, std vector and inside we're going to have a vector of string the std string i'm just going to call it res dir order which stands for just resolution directory orders you can name it whatever you want and now check which assets the device requires now we're just going to check what sort of device we're on so first we're going to check is it an ipad retina so if 2048 oops, 2048 equals screen size dot width or 2048 equals screen size dot height so this checks if it's in portrait or landscape i'm gonna do res i'm um, sorry uh, yeah res directory orders dot push back and you want to do iPad HD so this just means look into the iPad HD directory we can simply copy and paste this several times I'm just going to change this to iPad because if you can't find anything in the retina iPad directory or fall back to iPad then iPhone HD 5 then iPhone HD and finally a fall back to the iPhone directory the next step is GL view set design resolution size to 2048 1536 and we're going to do resolution policy colon colon no border that is the recommended one that is the best one we would say use and then what you can do this is designing it so it supports 
landscape mode which is what the application is by default if you wanted to support portrait mode you just change this to 1536 and this to 2048 in, in theory you could even put a simple if statement to check what orientation it is in but that's not too much of an issue to add or change i'm just going to copy and paste this do else paste it and we're going to change that to 1024 1024 and we're going to get rid of the ipad hd line and change this to 1024 by 768 gonna copy and paste that and we're going to do 1136 and now we're doing the iPhone HD file which is we're not 12 it's 1136 iPhone HD5 is iPhone 5 and iPhone 5s get rid of that type in 1136 640 you can find these resolutions on Google Wikipedia they're not too hard to find next thing we're going to check for is iPhone 4 and 4s 960 get rid of that get rid of that line as well and I'll put 960 by 640 and finally what we're going to do is else and in here we're going to put if Green size is actually no. We'll leave this for a separate tutorial. We're just going to keep it simple and keep it to iOS. And we can, oopsie, sorry about that. And what I meant just to iOS is, I will actually do a separate tutorial series which will cover how to design it and set it up so it supports all Android devices as well. And that's a little more complex and that requires an entire tutorial series in itself. So we'll just leave this to iOS. We can just get rid of these top three lines. Even if you run this in Android, you'll still be all right because you'll just most likely fall back to this resolution because most Android devices aren't of this resolution. So once it's full and back, the next step is to do file utils, the variable that we created at the top, set search paths, and we're just going to do assign it this, this res dir order, so resolution directory orders, and then we colon. And finally, what we're going to do is just do product clean. I found when doing quite a few changes with assets and whatnot you have a few issues so if we just play it now it's going to take a while while it compiles now once it runs hopefully it will load the assets from the iPhone folder and let's just show you what they are we got the um, the clothes normal close selected and say 40 by 40 that's this size of it what it's also got is a hello world image that just simply says iPhone. So you can easily see that it's loading the correct assets. Obviously, you'll probably want some sort of background, something that suits your game. But this is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, that's absolutely fantastic. It's reloaded the iPhone assets. What we're gonna do is just run it in iPhone 4 and 4S resolution. It's loaded the correct assets, iPhone HD, and it's got 86 by 86. And if we just select iPhone Retina with four inch, so iPhone 5 and 5S. Loaded the correct assets again, 
check out iPad. It's loaded the iPad assets. And finally, let's just check out iPad Retina. Okay, it's loaded iPad HD. And if we go down, it says 172 by 172. So yeah, it's got assets that are four times the resolution for iPad HD compared to the regular iPad. So yeah, that's it for multi-resolution support. We've done all the setup tutorials now, so create the project, set up multi-resolution support. In the next tutorial, we're gonna look at how to add a sprite from scratch. And after that, it's just gonna be general bite-sized tutorials to do little features in Cocos 2DX. If you have any questions about this, or Cocos 2DX in general, or even programming in general, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystem.co.uk. The link will be in the descriptions, or you can message us. All the required links for the source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thanks for watching.